Lord's house on this beautiful Sunday evening. Amen. Look at all these smiling faces out here. It's good to be here. Looking for a good time in the Lord tonight. Looking to hear from the Lord tonight. Amen. Let's go to him in a word of prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for another time we have to gather together in your house as a family of God, Lord. We um, ask, Lord, that you would just meet here with us tonight, Lord. We thank you for the good song we've already heard, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we can come to you in prayer, Lord. We have a, a number of names and needs tonight, Lord, that we want to call out to you, Lord, because we know our faithful prayers to you is the greatest thing we can do for these folks in their situation, Lord. We pray for J.T. Morrowfield and upcoming surgery, that you'll be with that make go flawlessly. Be with Amy Grafton and she uh, Cheryl and Alan Podobinski. Continue to be with Judy S Snow. Just touch her in every way. Be with Evelyn Watlington, as well as Jack Dale and Beverly Keene. We pray for Toby Moore and Maureen Johnson. Be with uh, Shelby Martin in an upcoming test. We um, uplift Betty Mitchell, as well as the needs of Nancy Newton, Angie Oaks, and Audrey Hoskins. We continue to pray for Leon and Connie Wiles, as well as Liz Thompson, Brother Jamie Cole. We uplift Robert and Vicki Reed, as well as Christine Yancey, Scott Dean and Carlton Duck. Be with um, Earl and Barbara Clarkson, Polly Fry. We uplift Faith Ann Hawley. Linda Durham, we pray for our upcoming youth rally with the AG family. Lord, we ask you to just show up in a mighty way. We'll have a bunch of young folks here Wednesday evening and we'll just have a good time and draw closer to you. We uplift Bible school, homecoming with John mentioned, our youth camp also coming up. We pray, Father, that you'll just help us in our preparation for that. Lord, let us be faithful and prepared and praying for that so that we know that you'll show up and do great and mighty things in those events. Lord, we uplift Cindy Rutherford and her family and the loss of her nephew. We ask that you just be with them and comfort them at this time as only you can. We pray for Billy White with an upcoming surgery. We pray for the uh, families of all the victims of that shooting in Buffalo, that you will just be to them and uh, be with them and just um, let your name be lifted high and holy through such a terrible situation that it all come out to the good in one way or another. We pray for Barbara Hall and the blockage that you'll see to that need. Be with Carlos Wells, who's uh, recovering from a fall. I pray for my several unspoken requests that you will see to those needs. We pray for... Um, Jerry Robertson, as well as Teresa Horbett, to be with her, as well as Pam Sullivan, be with uh, Timmy Eccles, who's going to have um, heart surgery the 18th. We pray, Father, that you'll just be with every aspect of that, that it'll go flawlessly and benefit his health 100%. We pray for um, Samantha Worley, who has an upcoming procedure as well, be with all of that. We uplift Haley Wilson, and we pray for the uh, family of the young man killed in Blairs the other night, Lord, that you just be with them and just wrap your arms of love around them as only you can in their time of loss, Lord. And now, once again, Lord, we pray, Father, Lord, for your um, spirit to fill this sanctuary tonight. Lord, be with every aspect of the service. Lord, be with all of us as we are, uh, receive the preaching of your word. Be with everyone out there over eternal broadcasting and the internet as well. Lord, speak to each and every one of us. If there's anyone anywhere who hears this message tonight and doesn't know Christ as their Savior, we pray that they'll hear about the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and they'll see their need and accept Christ as their Savior. And it'll be the greatest day in their life. Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us. And we invite you once again to meet here with us tonight. In Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Right, Miss Diane.
singing, but the Lord don't want to just hear the choir sing. He wants to hear the song of each and every one of us singing to him from our hearts. So I'll invite everyone at this time to grab a hymnal. Stand to your feet, and as you do, turn to number 324. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth verse of Draw Me Nearer, 324. Let's all stand.
number three, you got to turn yourself on. You know you're old when you got to turn yourself on and off. <laughs> Proverbs chapter number three. I don't know about you, but when God becomes real, he becomes enough. And if there's ever a time in the church that we need to be real, it's now. I am sincerely worried about the church of the living God. I'm worried about Christians. I'm worried about people being sold out 100% to God. Because if you find out how big God really is, he'll be big enough. But you got to strive to draw nine to God. And he'll draw nine to you. But you've got to strive. You've got to work at it. God's just not going to come by one day like a rain shine and just pour it on top of your head. Say amen or amen. It's a working relationship. 100%. Now tonight in Proverbs chapter 3 verses 9 and 10, I want to speak to you about on how you ought to handle your income. How you ought to handle your income. Look at Proverbs 3, 9a. Honor the Lord. The number one thing that will help you with your income is to know who the provider is. You may earn your money, but God is the provider. He's the one who gives you the breath and the ability to earn your income. Say amen. The word honor in Hebrew is kabad. And a good sense to make weighty or to make important or to place in prominence. Abounding with or boast or glorify or make, uh, to, be, uh, to make glorious, to glory, very great, to promote, to honor. You see, when you know God is God, you'll treat him as God and you respect what he says. You'll respect who he is. You'll respect what he's asking and what he needs you to do. You will follow him and draw nigh to him and you will allow him to lead you when you realize how great God is. That song said it all. God is big enough. We got to realize he's big enough. He's big whether you realize it or not. The difference is when you honor him and you put him first and you make him the love of your life, then he can make you the love of his life. But he's not going to force himself on you. you got to choose that. He's the provider. Two thoughts about the provider. First of all, we're blessed by the Lord. Look at Psalms 115, verse 15. You are blessed of who? The Lord, which made heaven and earth. If he made it, he certainly can control it. If he made it, he certainly does own it. You don't own anything. Yes, I do. Title's in the bank. When you die, the title will still be in the bank, but you won't own it no more. Somebody owned that before you owned it. Somebody will own it after you own it if the Lord tarries. But God owns it above all. Amen. He's the creator. We have to come to the realization that we're blessed by God and by no other source in this life. Your blessing is not going to come from people. It's not going to come from pleasure. It's not going to come from politics. It's not going to come from power. It's going to come from a place called heaven. And the only way you can be blessed is to be blessed of God. Other people may bless you for a while, but you get old after a while. And they're going to throw you away. They're going to get rid of you. They'll bless you for a while, but they ain't going to put up with you for so long. Because they're not God. Now, God may send his blessings through different ways and different directions. But never forget who the person behind it all is. It's God. If God sends you a blessing, I don't care who it comes from or what direction, God's the one sent it. And you better glorify him and thank him for it. God created it, he owns it, and he controls it all, and he'll control it always. If there are any blessings, He's the provider of every living one of them. And to think any otherwise is to slight God and discredit him. You don't want to do that. You need him. I need him. Say amen. amen. We need him. Now, we're not to just think this. We're to speak it. Look at Revelation 14, 7. We're to bless the Lord. Sing with a loud voice, fear God. Respect God. Give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and 
the fountains of waters. We're not just to think this, we're to speak it out loud. We're to tell other people how much we love the Lord and how much we care about Him and what He means to us with thankfulness and appreciation. To fear God doesn't mean to be afraid of Him. It simply means to respect and love Him as He deserves. Do you know who deserves your respect? He deserves your love. He deserves to see a tear run down your eye. He deserves to see joy fill your heart. Some of y'all don't look too happy tonight. I'm worried about you. You look real bad. And Mark Bishop gave me the greatest information coming to church tonight I could ever get on it. You ought to watch Eternal Broadcast. Or listen to Eternal Broadcast. It'll help you. Mark Bishop got on tonight and he said, he said, he was talking to this fella and he said, uh, you know how to make the world happy? Tell them to eat more Happy Meals. Because the world tells you y'all what you eat. Y'all a sad crowd tonight. Let me try it one more time. He said his uncle was sitting in the movie theater. And here lately it seems like a whole lot of people have been sitting in the movie theater. It's been packed every night. And he was sitting there with Mark Bishop and uh, all of a sudden he heard somebody drop a bag of M&M's. That would break my heart. <laughs> they dropped a bag of M&M's and them M&M's kept running down the aisle, down all the way down to the front. And his uncle says, that just makes me so happy. He said, what do you mean, uncle? It makes you happy because the M&M's is running down the, all the way down to the front. He says, it sounds like they're running for their life. <laughs> <laughs> now you look better. Hey, folks, if the Lord's the Lord of your heart, you're happy. Say amen. amen. Don't be sad. Don't let sadness rule your life. Let gladness rule your life and say so. When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, angels will attend, and help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Isn't that what the song says? I don't agree with but one part of it. I do not agree with one part of that song. It shouldn't be one by one because God has blessed us ton by ton. Say amen. And we ought to be happy. We ought to be the happiest people in the world. I'm going to make some people mad. I like that song, We're Happy People. I don't care if the choir likes it or not. I like it because we're happy people. And if you ain't happy, it's because you got an attitude and you're selfish. Amen or all me. Huh? We ought to be happy people. And when we're happy people, we'll tell other people why we're happy. Say amen. amen. We're happy because the Lord's on the throne. And we've got to give him that glory. That word glory in the Greek is doxa. Doxa. Glory is very apparent in a wide application, dignity, honor, praise, and worship. When you come to church, you ought not come to church worried about what other people are doing, what other people are thinking. You ought to walk in these doors thinking about one time thing. How can I sing his praises? How can I pray to him? How can I hear from him? How can I pray for other people? How can I glorify his name? How can I say thank you, Lord? for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and so free. Say amen. amen. Oh, listen, we're to bless the Lord. Giving him glory proves to everyone around you that you know from where your blessings are flowing and your faith and your allegiance is 100% with God. Do you know God needs to know that from you tonight? You need to know people are behind you. You need to know people are, are, are supporting you, whether it's on the job or in the family. Don't you like to hear you're doing a good job? Yes, you do. You love to know the people are behind you and say, go get them. If you want to see a good video, see me after, afterwards. I wish I'd have got to put it up on the screen. I wish I had a, if I'd have thought about it, I'd have done it. My son sent me a video. I don't have grandchildren. I have grand dogs. I have grand dogs. I had one sleep with me last night. She won't sleep with me tonight. She's done. That beast ain't coming in my bedroom tonight. She can sleep with Wendy. She can sleep with Brandon. But she's not sleeping with me. But Jason sent me a video of Luna. And they're standing out behind their house. And they got this little garden. I don't know how they call it a garden. It ain't big as my table. But anyway, it's their garden. They got their vegetables growing in their garden. And they're 
there's this rabbit standing out in the field looking at that garden. And bottom of the corner of that video, you see Luna just standing there staring. And Jason said, what? And that dog chased that rabbit to God knows where. That rabbit was gone. That dog took off and chased that thing. Hey, that rabbit knew Luna was around. Say amen. Luna done what daddy said do and chased off the rabbit. And so they'll have a few little greens to eat. That wouldn't even make a meal for me. But anyway, they'll have a few greens to eat uh, out of that little garden they got. Say amen or oh me. Hey, folks, what are you trying to say? Hey, you need to know you're doing a good job. Luna did a good job. She chased that rabbit off. I sent her, I, I'm taking all the credit because I sent her a bag of dog uh, uh, bacon. That's what made her so fast, eating that dog bacon. And uh, so I'm going to take credit for that one. It didn't give her Popeye strength. So he didn't chase that rabbit. Folks, everybody needs to know they're doing a good job. They're doing a good job. You need to hear that. But God needs to hear it too. Do you know when you come to this altar, that's the time you don't just ask for what you need. Sometimes you need to come to this altar and tell God, I'm with you, Lord, 100%. I'll go where you lead me. Where you lead me, I'll follow. I will follow, follow, follow on. I'll obey you. I'll surrender my will because I know you know what's best for me. Bless him now and he'll bless, uh, he will bless us here and he'll also bless us over there. I like to give blessings over here, don't y'all? I went to the mailbox the other day, and, and I got a check from Scott Dean. I had to have emergency heart surgery. I'm always having to send him a check every month, don't we, uh, Jamie? Pay for that radio time. But see, I done forgot I printed him some books, and he, he was late. You hear me, Scott Dean? I hope you listen to this. You was late, and I'm sending you a charge for interest <laughs> on that money you owed me for them books. Because I guarantee you he's done sold them and put the money in his bank. Our money ought to be in my bank where I printed them. Say amen. Don't die on me. I'll keep you all night. I was going to let you out early, but I, I can keep you here a while. I'm sitting down tonight. I can go a long time. <laughs> if I stand up, you'd be in trouble. Bless him now. And he'll bless you now and later. You just got to bless him. But you got to be active in that blessing because he's the provider. We are blessed by the Lord. We are to bless the Lord. Now, number two. Not only is he the provider, he's the possessor. He says, I'm the Lord with whose substance? Thy substance. Now, if God gave it to you, it's yours. And now you've got to make a decision on what you're going to do with it. What are you going to do with what he's given to you? It's your substance. God has given it to you, but he's given it to you to see what you're going to do with it. If you're going to honor him, or not. This thing of tithing, and I don't preach on tithing often. You know that if you've been here a while. But I'm preaching on it tonight. Because I want to tell you, there's some Christians in big trouble because they won't tithe. And here's their little excuse. Well, I don't make much money. Well, you know, the last time I looked in the Bible, we'll talk a little bit more in a little bit, but 10% was 10% whether you're a millionaire or whether you have very little. God didn't ask the millionaire to give any money. Ask the poor person. The poor person, no more millionaire. 10%. He gives it to you to see if you're going to honor him by giving back that 10%. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. It's given to us by God. I want you to understand that tonight. Yeah, your paycheck comes from your employer, but God's the one who gives your employer the ability to have the business and you the ability to work and the breath to do the job. It comes from God. Look at 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 27. And Hezekiah had two words, three words, exceeding much riches and honor. He wasn't only rich, he was respected. And he made himself treasuries for silver and for gold and for precious stones and for spices and for shields and all manner of pleasant jewels. Storehouses also for the increase of corn and wine and oil and stalls for all manner of beasts and coats for the flock, for flocks. Moreover, verse 29, he provided him cities and possessions of flocks and herbs in abundance. That word he is talking about the very next person we're fixing to talk about. For who? God had given him very much. Let me tell you something. You honor God and he'll honor you. You dis 
disrespect God and you rob God, he's not going to bless you. I get so tired of hearing some of these Christians whine and groan and complain who won't give God a red nickel, skin flints on God, and then they go around and complain to everybody about having nothing. Well, there's a reason. There's a reason. Let me tell you something. God will take what you give him and multiply it many times over. He will bless if you tithe. If you give above your tithe, he will bless you. It's God that's going to bless you. It's not your boss. It's not your family. If you get a blessing, God is the one who had it in his plan. And had it pl Here's what's going to be sad. When some of us get to heaven and find out God had a whole lot more plan for us, but we were skin flints and we robbed him so he couldn't give it to us. Is that God's fault? No, it's our fault. Because we didn't honor him. We didn't bless him. We didn't follow him. We didn't trust him. This passage makes it clear. King Hezekiah was rich, had exceeding riches. And it was not by Hezekiah's own hand. It was a gift and a blessing from the God of heaven. If we're blessed, it's not our education. It's not our innovation. It's not our consternation that brought it to us. It's God who has enriched and blessed you and, and you and me. And we have to recognize that and honor him. He's the possessor and we are the stewards of all that he's given us. You are not taking a dollar of yours with you to heaven. When you die, it's all going to be left behind. Every last nickel of it. We have no right to be selfish and greedy with the goodness of God in our lives. I'm going to tell you something. I know times are tough. I just filled my car up with gas and had to have intercessory prayer. And I, and I had to have a crying towel too. Say amen. Four dollars and four cents a gallon. I broke my heart and my pocketbook. But you know what? You got to have gas. You got to buy. You gotta, just go and do what you got to do. You got you to you work. You got to serve the Lord. You got to do what you got to do. Hey, things are tight and th things are tough. But you know what? We're still living in the greatest country God ever put on this green earth. He's blessed us in so many ways. You go to one of these third world countries. You go down to one. Of, you go down to Haiti and see little kids who walk around all day with bowls in their hand. You know why they go walk around with bowls in their hand? Just hoping by chance somebody put some food in that bowl. They're starving to death on our doorstep. But you know why they're starving to death? Many, many years ago when they founded the country of Haiti, they sold their soul to the devil and the witch doctors that if their country would be, uh, be a country and be a sovereign nation, they would sell their soul to the devil, and they did, and it's the poorest country in the hemisphere. Every time you hear it's bad news from Haiti, is it not? It's always bad news from Haiti because they sold their soul to the devil. Well, bless God, I want to sell my soul to God. Say amen. I want to be a good steward of my time a good steward of my talent, and a good steward of the treasure that God gives me. We, when we try to become a possessor and a controller and a hoarder of his blessings, we're ungrateful and will soon become unprofitable and will be unuseful to God. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of Christians walking around and, and they think they're all that in a bag of potato chips, but they can't blow the fuzz off a of peach because they don't have any power of God on them. They're doing and doing and doing and doing, but ain't nothing happening. You know why? The power of God's not on them. And you know why the power of God's not on them? I'll tell you exactly why it's not on them. Because they become unuseful and unprofitable to God. That's why. They don't obey Him. They don't trust Him. They don't tell Him they love Him. But they, they come to church every time the door's open. But the power of God's not on them. They're not doing anything. They're just taking up space. It's like a work knot on the shelf. You say, how you know about that? Because I got a whole lot of them. I need to get rid of them. Which at least that's what me tells me anyway. I need to get rid of them. Them collect dust. Don't be a whatnot on the shelf. Say amen. We want to be useful to God. And if you're going to be useful and you're going to be productive for God, you've got to honor him with not only your tithe, but your talent and your treasure. If you ought to be singing in the choir and you're sitting out there in a pew, shame on you. That's your chance. She needs a microphone. She's not as loud as you are. And she said, Amen. She said, Amen. Your talent, your treasure, your time, 
Well, how do you give God time? By praying, by reading your Bible, by witnessing. Give God some time, amen? Be useful to Him. When we stay honest, faithful, and grateful to the Lord, He'll keep us effective and functional for Him in the ministry of God. He's the possessor. God uh, has given us our uh, goods. God has uh, been given to us by God. Now be it grew and multiplied. Look at Genesis 47, 27. And Israel dwelt in the land of what? Egypt's a picture of the world. We're saved, but we have to live in this world. We have to live in this Egypt. And so in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions therein, and grew and multiplied exceedingly. Ah, I wonder she planted some tomato plants the other day, I think five in one place and two in the other. And they're right there in the front of my house so I can watch them. Y'all are dead crap. Because first time one of them turns red, they're going to be ingested. <laughs> Gone. I love, look, there's only two things on earth that I hope we never have to do without. Tomatoes and Duke's mayonnaise. Say amen. Amen. And, I, and, and so they got little blooms hanging on them. I'm so excited I could scream. There's little blooms hanging everywhere. So we're going through Lytles back yonder. We're going through Lytles the other day. And I'm going out the door, and I had a conniption. I said, Wendy, look over yonder. There's cherry tomato plants. And they had cherry tomatoes all over them, just as green as grass. But them suckers was hanging by the cluster. I said, we need one of them. How much is it? $8.99. Let me go home and watch my plants. <laughs> Let me go home and watch mine bloom and blossom. Say amen or amen. <laughs> but I was shocked. Sit down in the store. They were just hanging. Clustered. You don't blame me. Drop by on the way home. You see them. They're sitting in there. If they ain't sold them, I doubt if they have it. $8.99. They drop them $6.99. Walter might get interested. But $8.99, I'm not interested. Clusters. Just hanging there exceedingly. Yet God provides us the means to take care of ourselves and our families. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. But this world cannot control me and you. If it does, you're a loser. But if God controls me and you, even though we're in this nasty now and now, He'll bless us exceedingly. Well, I'm not getting no blessings. Well, I think I'd hit the altar and ask God why I'm not. I think I'd get in the Bible and search out why I'm not being blessed. Because God blessed Abraham. He blessed Jacob. He blessed Isaac. He blessed Joseph. Don't ask me who's next. <laughs> blessed Joshua. Say amen. He blessed Moses, the men of God. If they were dedicated to God, give God 100%, glorified his name. They were exceedingly blessed. Not always necessarily money, but the power of God was on their life and, their, and God and it was on their heart, and people knew that. We need to get back to that today. Say amen or amen. I'm, I'm preaching pretty good. Y'all might not get out of here tonight. If we're faithful to him, he will be more than faithful to us. He'll be gracious. Say amen. He'll be gracious. The word exceedingly in the Hebrew is... Uh, Neod. It means enthusiasm. Some of y'all need a dose. Vigor. Some of y'all need a bigger dose. Fervor. Passion. Speedily. <whistles> Sean Harbin needs a dose. Speedily. Diligently. Especially. Exceedingly. Great. Louder. And louder. Mighty. So much quickly. And well. Exceedingly. Listen, if God's hand on you, you can't help but be excited because the Holy Ghost is in control. Some of y'all, I wonder if the Holy Ghost has ever touched you. You don't ever look like you're happy. You don't ever look like you're excited. Don't be that way. We got something to be excited for. Say amen. We got something to be excited about. We're going to heaven, not going to hell. And we can help other people get to heaven. We focus on that. We're going to be some excited people. When lives are changed and people are saved, God's blessings will not be hidden. They will not be minuscule. It will be visible that the hand of God is upon me and you. My question to you tonight is can you see the hand of God on you? 
Can others see the hand of God on you? If there's any question tonight, the place to be is sitting on this front row or kneeling at this altar or standing there and cry out to God, Lord, tell me what I need to do to honor you more. Tell me what I need to do to be useful to you. Tell me what I need to do so that you reach out and make me profitable for the kingdom. Lord, I want to do something that's eternal. Say amen. I want to do something eternal. See, not only were our, uh, it was given to us by God the possessor, it grew and it multiplied. God will bless you if you honor him exceedingly. But see, the goods were parted. Now this is where the plow goes down. Acts 2.45 And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to what? All men. As every man had need. The early church learned the secret to the success of blessings. Give what you have. God never asks you to give what you don't have. These birds on TV that tell you to go to the bank and send them 10000 and God will send you 100000 cut them off and don't go back and listen to them. That's not scriptural. God has never asked me and you to give what we don't have, but he has asked us to give what we do have. They put a, I put a banana in a bowl with a little hole in it. And they wanted to test and see what that monkey would do when they saw that banana in that round container with a hole and you could see through it. And that monkey went crazy. Because that monkey reached in that hole and he got his little hand in the hole and he grabbed the hole of that manna. Joey Cloud called them pernanners. Got a hold of that manna and he couldn't get it out. And he said, he shook, he took that bowl, but he, he done gripped the hold of that banana, and he couldn't get the banana out of the hole because he wouldn't let go of it. And he couldn't get it and his fist both out of the hole. A lot of Christians live like that. They got a hold of their time, they got a hold of their treasure, they got a hold of their talent, and they are tight fisted to the grindstone Grinches and Scrooges, and they won't give God any money, they won't give God any time, they won't give God any talent, and then they'll wonder why God ain't blessed them. Amen or oh me. Amen. Do not be a hoarder or a self-indulgent person. Don't hoard back to have, and don't just always be doing for you. Don't just always be doing for you. The early church learned that secret that it was better to give than to receive. Amen? Better to give than to receive. And they learned if they saw a brother or sister in Christ who had a need, they'd sell what they had or they would give them what they needed because they loved them. And they knew this. If they helped somebody else when they got in need, God would make sure they were helped. Amen or oh me. If you never give and never help, you're never going to be given to or never going to be helped. That's the bottom line. When people, uh, rather, uh, when, when they saw a man or woman with a need, they fulfilled it without a hesitation. They did not have to be asked. They figured if God showed them the need, it was for them to fulfill. You see, we got this thing wrong today. You know, people are all, I mean, I tell you, I wish I had a nickel for every time somebody called and asked me to pay their light bill. Or pay their rent. Don't go to this church, but they, they want the church to pay their, God didn't create the church for that. I'm sorry, you can get mad if you want to. God didn't create the church to be a social place. But God did create the church to help people. I'm going to tell you something. If every Christian saw a need, and fulfill that need for other people, you would never get a phone call. Amen, amen. See, we don't like this kind of preaching because that means when God shows
shows you somebody needs a grass mode and you've got a zero turn lawnmower and theirs is blowed up. I remember one time I had a next door neighbor and he was working five and six days a week and his grass done got growed up. And all he had was one of them push lawnmowers. Well, God done been good to me. He done give me a Sears, what was them things called? Craftsman. Been a long time. The old green lawnmower. And buddy, I'll tell you one thing. I wore that thing out diligently. But one day, I was, I was sitting there and I had a little time and I looked across my neighbor's yard and guess what? My yard looked better than his because his had been mowed. I said, what the heck? I got the gas. I got the time. On over there. I started. I mowed his whole yard for him and got it done. When he come home, he liked to flip out. Watch him on my grass. Did I do something wrong? I said, no. Just try and be nice to you. Just try and be good to you. You working hard. I had a couple hours. I had a ride and more. You come home, push it. Take you two hours. Took me a half hour and I'm done. Say amen to me. So I tried it on the other neighbor next side. And they were on vacation. They were gone. But they had a whole lot more land than the other one on the other side did. They had six acres of land. And I had a little time. I had a little gas. I said, okay, they've been good to me, been nice to me in the past. My time be nice to them. They're off on vacation. When they come home, they won't have to worry about mowing the grass. So I went through and mowed the grass. And as soon as I got around there, I didn't see it. He had an orange cord from the house to his garden. I thought I'd run over a snake, but the snakes don't go zzzz. I run over that cord. And I thought, you know, ain't this just like the devil? I'm over here trying to be nice, trying to help this guy with my lawnmower and my gas. And I run over a hundred dollars, it was a hundred dollar cord. No, I'm sorry, probably fifty dollar cord. It's about a fifty dollar cord. So I had to go buy another cord and place that thing. I didn't say a word. I said, if he figures it out, I'll tell him. Otherwise, I ain't opening my mouth. Grass is mowed. Everything looks nice. So I'm sitting at home. They, I see him pull down the driveway, headed to their house. They go on over there. And Brandon and Jason saw him. So across the field, they went and go see him because they knew they'd done been down on vacation. They knew they'd done bought him something back. So they were going to go over and see what it was. He come back, and I'm at my desk working. Brandon come in and said, so-and-so next door said, give this to you. I said, what is it? It was a $100 bill. <laughs> Boy, that really helped me every time he went somewhere to think about his grass. <laughs> I said, I still made $50 even after I bought a cord. I still made $50. Say amen. <laughs> You're not going to go without with God. If you see a need, big or small, serious, or just a need, if we'd step up to the plate when God shows us something, if we'd just do it and don't let the left hand know what the right hand's doing, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Matthew 6, 3. But when thou doest alms, let not the left hand know what the right hand doeth. Let, not, uh, let thine alms be done in. And the Father which is in, see that in secret himself shall reward thee. That hundred dollars was open. Say Amen. Hey, I had to spend fifty dollars on that cord, but it was still fifty to more dollars left. I thought, ain't God good? Hey, He didn't have no idea about that cord. He didn't have no idea what I. But see, God knows everything. Come on, you wonder. You know why some of y'all are so unhappy? You don't never do nothing for nobody. You think everybody owes you? <laughs> Wake up! No, they don't. You owe everybody else. Amen. Do it in secret, and God will bless you openly. Luke six thirty eight. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosoms. My granddaddy, he had such a big garden. He had two gardens as big as his church. This, he had one that was a spring garden, and then the next one was on the other side. That was a lake garden. We'd be working in the spring garden. He's over there planting and plowing the fall garden. He worked us to death. But you tell we eat good, didn't we? Had no problem eating. And he'd sell whatever we didn't use. People come by and buy bushels. Some kids don't even know what a bushel is anymore. 
They know what a can of green beans is, but they ain't never seen a bushel of green beans in their life. They ought to get educated. Say amen. Bushel, he, we, he'd say, now go out there and get them a bushel or half a bushel of, of green beans. And he said, now go back. Why, green beans? He said, shake that thing. Because we done just dumped it in that fast as we could. He'd make a shake it, shake it, and that thing go down about that far. He said, now go back and put some more on that. I said, Green, if you'd left her, shut up and go on back there and give me some more beans on that. I ain't robbing these people. God knows what I'm doing. He was a primitive Baptist. He thought he was working his way to heaven. He won't go cheat his neighbor. Instead, he'd go to hell for cheating his neighbor. That might would work. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, but he had it all backwards. But he made us go back and put some more in there. Press down. And run and over. He wanted to be good to the people buying his vegetables because he won't know dummy. He knew they was coming back by more. And he wanted to be honest and want to be fair. Let me tell you something. You just do what God shows you to do. And it's going to come back to you not just pressed down, but it's going to be running over. Say amen. And the last part of that verse says, For with the same measure that you meet with all, it should be measured to you again. You being a Scrooge and a tightwad with your time, your talent, and your treasure, you ain't going to get nothing back. But if you're free with your time, free with your talent, free with your treasure, and you help others and you do everything you can that God shows you to do, if God showed it to you, it's not an accident. He showed it to you for a purpose, to do what you can do. If we start playing this game of being jealous of each other or keeping a record of everything we do, you're going to lose. Because God doesn't do anything like, hey, God may not give it back to you in money. He may give it back to you in health. Amen? He may give it back to you in souls. He may give it back to you in, 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 in just other blessings other than money all the time. I was sitting in drive through the other day, minding my own business, putting my order in. And when I pulled up to the window to pay, she said, go on. I said, why? The car in front of you paid for your meal. I said, glory to God. I got to come back here more often. <laughs> hey, somebody just out of the wild blue yonder paid for my meal. Did you know who it was? No, they had dummies had tinted windows. Well, don't you know who drives what? Let me tell you something. I ain't got no idea what your car looks like. Because I'm the first one to get here, and I'm the last one to leave here. I got no idea what you drive. So how would I know? All I know is they threw a hand at the window and waved and went on. And I said, well, God, you'll have to bless them because Walter showed us the world don't know who it is. I ain't got no idea. God, that's just a little... Well, God can do so much. So big. Why? Because you see, God, it's given to us by God. He grows it and multiplies it. And they were not afraid to have their goods parted. They weren't afraid to give. They weren't afraid to share. Give and it should be given to you. Press down, running over, shall men give into your bosom. Do you know why that says bosom? It's talking about love. They will give to you their time. They'll give to you their talent. They'll give to you their treasure because they love you. And you know why they love you? Because you first loved them. And you know why you love them? Because God first loved you. If love is right here to here, it's going to be right here to here. Stand to your feet. Father, I've preached as best as I know how tonight. Lord, I pray that tonight, Lord, you will help us realize the truth of the matter, that you're the provider. Honor the Lord. And that you're the possessor. With thy, It's our substance. You've given it to us. But God, you've given to us all that we possess. You have grown and multiplied everything we have. And where we can't be selfish with it, we have to take our goods and part them and share them, 
share our blessings of our time, our talent, and our treasure with all who are around us. And Lord, I claim that verse for our church tonight, and everybody's heard this message, that we'll leave here tonight, come to this altar and say, Lord, show me what you'd have me to do. Show me what you'd have me to give, time, talent, and treasure. And Lord, I'll give it, because Lord, I know it shall be given back to me, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, because you trust me with things. You trust to give them to me, Lord, because I'll give them back. And then, Lord, you'll give me more again, and I'll give it back. Well, we need Christians who are never going to keep it. They're just going to be a phone. They're just going to be a, 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 a vessel that it passes through from God to others. And, God, when you trust people like that, you'll give them more because you know they won't hold on to it. They won't grasp it and clutch it and be grinched and be scrooged, Lord, you give them more because you know they'll take that more and do more with it. And the more we do it, the more we're able to do. The more we're able to be blessed. Lord, help us to realize that principle tonight. That, Lord, that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Take this invitation. Speak to every heart, I pray. In Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Come talk to God tonight. He wants to hear from you more than you want to talk to him. Come on right now.
there on the road literally 350 to 60 days a year. That's a lot. They're going to leave here Wednesday and go to Knoxville. They're going to leave here Wednesday night and drive all the way to Knoxville, be Knoxville Sunday morning for a prayer breakfast. I mean, no grass grows under their feet. And uh, they love the Lord and they love people. And you'll love them, I promise you. You will leave different than you came. That much, I guarantee you. You will leave different than you came. Because these young people love the Lord. Their parents love the Lord. And uh, we all need that kind of rally. Say amen. amen. Speaking of rally. Now, young man, you understand i got to walk all the way to the back. <laughs> You understand that our little devotional deity prayer ain't going to work tonight. You got that? Are you listening? It could take some good play. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. I, I, I've got a glare in my eyes. I can't see the eyeballs. I thought you were asleep. Okay. You're thinking. Okay. That, that's what I smell burning. You're thinking. I got you. Okay. I got, now, I got, to, I got to walk all the way back on, and I'm old and slow. So you make sure you pray for everybody tonight. You pray for Wednesday night. Okay. You pray for next Sunday. And if you have to, you go and pray for youth camp and Bible school and John Mitchell. I know he'd appreciate it. You do what you got to do to get me to that back door. You got me? I love you, son. You're going to do a good job. He's going to do a good job, isn't he? Amen. 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 Manny, skinny Manny, you dismiss us in prayer. Ten for um, like You got about 15 seconds. <laughs> Let us pray. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for bringing us all here safe and sound. Lord, I ask that you uh, keep everybody safe and bring us back at the next appointed time. Lord, I ask that you be with the uh, upcoming event, be with the AG family Wednesday. Allow uh, everybody here to bring somebody with them and so they can, so the, uh, the AG family can be a blessing and we can go to further your kingdom do it. I ask that uh, give us the opportunity to spread the gospel this week. Lord, I, um, I want to thank you for everything you've done. We thank you for the message that we heard from the preacher. Uh, all these things we pray in your person's name. Amen.